Hey, how's it going? I'm Chris with PearsonCopy.com, and I'm here to help your brand to make more sales with email. As part of my 100 emails in 100 days breakdown challenge, I am breaking down an email today uh, from Perfect Snacks. Um, they just sent, or they sent an email a little while ago uh, about a new product alert. Um, they're launching a new product, and um, this is a direct offer email. So there's really no preamble to it. They, they literally just dive right into the offer and what it's going to be. As you can see here on my screen, introducing the Perfect, um, perfect Bar Snack Size. A little a little body copy here, um, a, a number of CTAs, and then the image of the boxes of the snacks that they're uh, or the bars that they're actually selling. So the new new product launch bars. Um, so that being said, let me go and dive in and break this email down. It should be a quick one today, um, but there's a lot packed into this that we can we can take insights from, so you can take back to your brand and make more sales. Uh, let's go ahead and dive in. So the first thing we're going to look at here uh, is the subject line. So new product alert with the emoji with the star eyes. Um, I think this is great. It's a direct offer. If the list that they're sending this to or the, the segment of the list they're sending this to is engaged uh, and they're, they're opening emails consistently um, and they're clicking on emails or replying emails, et cetera, they're buying, um, sending a new product launch to that portion of your list is going to do pretty well, I think. Um, if you've been building up relationship, you're no like and trust factor, things like that, um, the, your list is going to open this and consider clicking and, and even consider buying. So I think this as a direct offer of new product alert is a great way to get people to click because they're curious and they want to know what the new thing is. Uh, new is a great uh, hook for people. Um, just humans in general, new is is a hook for people. It's curious. They, they, they want to know what it is. What's the new thing? Um, as you can tell with like people lining up for the new iPhones, for things from like Supreme or brands that do um, limited limited edition drops or things like that. Um, even in the industry, like a very niche thing like slime, like slime that um, people make for kids and adults and things like that. Um, new flavors, new colors, new types. Uh, new is just a very, very good hook. Um, and I don't think that'll ever change because new gives a human a, a nice dopamine hit and uh, they want to click and, and discover what the new thing is. So uh, with that being said, the new product alert, I think it's a good subject line. I would test maybe two or three different ones against this. Um, and every time you do a new product, you can test uh, two, three, four, five different subject lines based on uh, different hooks or different types of hooks. So new is one of them. Big is another one. Fast or quick is another one. You can go down the list of different types of hooks to get people to click into and just test those for each of these product launches. So for example, this next size, um, it's small, quick, and easy, um, and it's new. So you get, you get basically three major major hooks there. Uh, it's new, it's quick and easy, or it's quick and fast and it's easy. Those are three big ones. So I would test maybe three, four subject lines based on those things and just see which one gets the best click in sales. And then moving forward, you know that segment of your list or which segment of your list actually likes fast, quick, easy, big, new, etc. cetera. Um, and you can break it out by that. So anytime you do a new launch or a new, uh, new product introduction, you know um, with a certain, certain degree of, of um, probability which uh, which hook is going to get your list to click and buy. And so with that being said, that's just different stuff you can do with subject line. It's just the word new or quick product alert or new product alert or fast new product alert, something like that. You can do stuff like that and just make it super simple and test those big hooks. Uh, next thing, we're going to skip the, the subject line uh, or sorry, the, the from name from email address. We've already talked about that quite a bit in other videos. So you can go check those out, but I want to get into the actual product itself. So um, before we dive in, so we have the logo at the top here, brand name logo. We have the tagline and we have a let's shop CTA at the top. Um, one thing I would test here with these, with these introduction or these new product launches is I, I don't think I would put anything at the top. I would just literally dive right into the introduction of the actual products because it's a new product alert, putting this stuff at the top. Um, while it doesn't seem like a whole lot, it does take some mental energy to see and say, Oh, this is not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the new thing. And they skip right past it and go right to this, uh, to the introducing perfect bar snack size. So that's something I would test too. Um, if you have the ability to is split test, maybe subject lines and potentially split test what this top banner does for people. Um, if it gets more clicks, replies, opens, et cetera. And I, I would see what that does because like, like I mentioned, people are coming here because the new product alert, they want to know what the new thing is. They're skipping over this entirely and they're going right to this introducing perfect snack size. And you have a CTA here right after the copy. So having this at the top doesn't really do a whole lot. Um, yes, it feels good as a brand to have your perfect snacks brand logo, to have your tagline, to have a CTA here to think people are just going to go here to let's shop. Um, I, I don't think it's going to really do much. So I would test into that and see if that helps at all. If it doesn't, or has a neg negligible, negligible, um, difference, then maybe leave it. it. It's really just testing to see what is actually going to get more clicks, replies and sales. Uh, let's look at the copy here. 
So introducing perfect parts and excise. So if you've um, looked at any kind of sales letter or copywriting, direct response copywriting, this introducing piece is the moment when they introduce the offer. So this is a direct pitch, um, straight pitch sales email. Um, before this, there's usually a preamble of some kind, of some kind of like story or pain or mechanisms or solutions with mechanisms, something like that, right? Um, for, for a less aware audience of your brand. So this is a very, um, like I said, it's direct. The customers are aware of your brand. They're aware of your products. And in the copy here, it does mention, hey, um, the protein bar you know and love now available online in a convenient snack size. So they're speaking directly to the people who've already purchased and they're speaking directly to people who are aware of the brand. They're, they're, they've already bought or they're really close to buying. Um, I would assume this is just a, this is for customers that have already bought. That, that's what my assumption would be here. Um, simply because they speak to the customer as if that's the case. That ties back into also new product alert, um, the subject line here, looking at what the big hooks are like a big idea hook so the new quick fast easy small um same amount of protein packed into a small bar something like that right some kind of direct offer that gets people curious to click in so i would test that if they aren't already doing that and that ties back into the direct offer here um, you could also just say introducing perfect bar snack size that does take away a little curiosity because you're telling what's inside but it could be something as, as specific as that is like people are already looking for a smaller bar that they can pack away while they're on travel with the kids with uh, while they're at soccer practice, while they're on a hike, while they're, you know, uh, at work, if they don't have time for lunch, they can eat a couple of these bars or one or two of them. Um, that type of thought behind this copy, even there's not, not a whole lot here, can um, give you a lot of different ways to test and see what's actually going to resonate with your, your customers already. If you, if you don't already know. Um, after selling for a while, you should have an idea of what makes them tick. Um, if you don't, this is one way you could test is by introducing different offers and trying those big hooks and updating the copy um, per those big hooks. Um, so yeah, introducing perfect bar snack size, the customer's aware. Um, this is four customers already purchased. I'd imagine they segmented the list out to buyers only. This is what they're introducing, seeing what hits, and then sending it to the rest of their list. Um, you could also do another idea is customers who have already purchased. Uh, maybe one, two, three, four times, whatever your VIP is, VIP customers are, or people who have repeat, repeat purchases over the last 90 days, you could send it to them first for 48 hours and say, Hey, 10% off our new launch. Um, you have purchased you know, like your, your valuable customers. You get, you purchased consistently and repeated. You've got a couple purchases over the last like three months. And we want to give you a chance to get this before it sells out, um, before the rest of the list, the rest of the customers get it. Um, this is exclusive. You have 48 hours by now, um, that urgency and scarcity. Uh, could increase sales because you're one rewarding them for being great customers. You're giving them a coupon, and that that list of already repeat customers is, is most likely, and in most cases, should be smaller than your bigger list of just subscribers. Um, if it's the other way, then that's fantastic. The more the more buyers you have on the list, the better. I prefer a buyer's list as opposed to a, a subscriber list, just because buyers are have voted with their with their with their money who they want to buy from. Um, but you could send this to your segment of buyers only, and do ten percent off and get them to buy to get it get products moving, get reviews. Uh, get revenue generated and then use that to send it to the rest of your list and say, Hey, look at these reviews and you can use our social proof. You can get stories from people. You can get, um, you can use things, uh, use softwares to get reviews of videos, pictures, et cetera, of people using the bars. And that way you just have even more for the launch and you can, you can put a whole lot more into it because your customers already created it for you. Right. So, and that, that'll get people, potentially people aren't buying because the bars you already sell or the product you already sell is too big or too much or, they tried it with a friend and they only ate half of it and threw the rest away because it got old or something. Uh, whatever the whatever the objection may be, the snack size addresses those objections and you can use that with your customers who've already purchased, get them to buy this and then send it to the rest of your list as a, as a new product launch. Um, so there's different ways you can do that. But I would say just strategy wise, that, that, that could be a method you could use to one, increase sales and two, reward your, your existing customers for buying from you already and three, get your subscribers who have not purchased excited about it because there's already a group of people already buying. So they want to be part of the in crowd. So that's another trigger too, is not being excluded. Um, so yeah, there's, there's just some ideas on strategy there here. So let's get into the copy here. So introducing, um, perfect bar snack size. So the perfect, I'm going to read this and I'm going to explain why I want to read this. Um, once I do, because there's some pieces here that I think we can make this copy um, a little bit more specific and it, we could, with the assumption this is going to the entire list and not just your customers, we can make this a little bit better, a little more specific and a little more um, emotionally resonant with the customers who, with the people who are potentially gonna buy this, right? So let's go ahead and read this. The protein bar you know and love, now available online in a convenient snack size. Perfect bar snack size comes in two delicious flavors, peanut butter and dark chocolate chip peanut butter. With perfect bar snack size, a little goes a long way. So when you read that, there really isn't a whole lot of emotional connection, right? You have, you have you're just introducing this snack bar, is a direct offer, direct sales pitch. You're thinking, hey, we just got to tell them what it is and get out of the way and let them buy. That's true. There is something here, though, 
the it's new, right? So that's one big hook. It's smaller. Um, so the question may be, okay, it's smaller, but how much protein is in it or how many calories or how many, whatever you're, 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 uh, selling on. And then also how can, how can I use this? Like why is smaller better? So those three things I would address in this copy. So, uh, the, the protein bar, you know, and love. So that's speaking to the people who've already purchased now available online in a convenient snack size. So they're saying, Hey, instead of having the full bar, you can have like a half bar or a snack size bar. Right. So you don't have to eat a full one or. It kind of addresses the objection of if I eat half and get rid of the rest or save the rest for later, or if I want to give this to my kid, or if I just need a quick snack instead of a full bar, like there's a lot of, a lot of objections there of why I wouldn't buy the regular bar or some things that make the regular bar too much for me that the snack size addresses. You don't have to say it just says, Oh, it's small. It's not, it's better because it's smaller. And it, it just, it kind of, you, you, the customer thinks, Oh, smaller is better. Okay, cool. But you can dimensionalize this. You can give a benefit of like when you're on the go, when you're going from work to get your kids at, this, at school to take them to soccer practice, when you're um, going on a hike and you want to reduce weight, um, but you still need the calories to, uh, to make that hike, you can take this along. Um, there's all different kinds of like avatars you could speak into for people who buy. So um, with, uh, I believe if I remember correctly, Perfect Snacks does focus on families. Uh, so I would speak to that. I would dimensionalize that for the family. Of like if you have the kids running between practice and soccer and school and piano lessons and whatever it may be, um, or if you need to bridge the gap between lunch and dinner because your kids are complaining because it's hungry, it's hot, it's summer, da, 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 whatever, um, put, put the product in their life and let them see how it's going to be used in their life. I think that instead of like that added to this copy, um, is going to make this copy better because people are going to start to imagine how they can actually use the products because a snack size, if, if this is half the regular size and I'll just eat two of these for a full one, right? That's fine. But how am I going to, where am I going to actually use this? Like, why should I not just buy the big ones instead of the little ones? Like that, that's a general objection that you could get really specific on an address. So that's something you could dimensionalize it with, with this copy, where to put this copy. Cause this is a paragraph, um, when it comes to introducing, I mean, what are one, two, three sentences, right? So you can add a sentence in to dimensionalize it. A little goes a long way. That's a general tagline that covers a lot of ground, but something maybe before that of like, when you're on the go, when you're taking the kids between practice and soccer, et cetera, you know what I mean? So adding just that little bit of benefit and a little bit of dimensionalization can do a huge amount when it, when it comes to clicks, because people can say, Oh, that's how it fits into my life. I'm going to buy this. If people can't or are not guided to imagine how this thing's going to work in their life or what the, you know, the solution is, it's small, it's snack size. That's the solution. But like, what does that actually do for them? What's the mechanism behind it being small? Like what does that actually create in their life? Explaining that and sharing that is where you get more clicks. Because now people can actually say, oh, I don't have to do the work of thinking, oh, I can feed this to my kids, I can feed this to my, my family, my spouse, et cetera. Um, and you do the work for them and you just guide them into that click and say, hey, this makes sense, right? And they click. So um, there's there's not a whole lot of copy here. And this is a direct offer and it's not a huge email, but there's a lot you can unpack here when it comes to the copy, the strategy behind this as well. Um, and then the final pieces here, we've got the product images, so random product images, I think. Uh, this, this looks great. I, I really like the idea of showing the boxes. Um, also, you get the added benefit of having all of the, uh, basically what's in the box and what's in the product on the box here. So you don't have to like write the copy. You can just put it in an image. I would test against removing this box and teasing, like here's everything you get. Click here to see how big they are or to see what size they are or see how small the snack size is or et cetera to get that click to the product page. Um, so you can use a, a teaser or a hook or curiosity in that sense of the new big, quick, fast, easy, et cetera, to get them to click through. Uh, when it comes to this direct offer, you're trying to sell. So you're trying to move units, which means you're trying to get people to click so they can buy later. So the click is probably the most important piece of this email. Um, that's the action you want. So that's the one thing you want them to do is to click on this email to get to the product page so they can buy it. Uh, with that being said, we have, uh, we have the image. Uh, we have the same, a similar banner as the top of the email. We have the Perfect Snacks logo. Uh, brand name logo. We have the tagline and then we have another learn more at perfectsnacks.com. So this here, I think it's fine. It's after the offer. Um, if they go past the shop now and they come down here, I would put let's, let's, um, let's get snack sized or let's get small or something like that. Um, or enjoy snack here as a CTA as a set of learn more. Um, and then you have your standard footer information with the socials at the bottom. So, um, I would even get rid of the socials because this is a direct offer. You don't want them clicking a social at all. You want them to click here to go buy. You're introducing and launching a product. I don't want them to go anywhere else other than one of these two products. Um, that's something else you could test too, is put these two products in their own little box with their own buttons and say, Hey, which one do you want? Um, and you could also do a deal of if you buy one of each box, you get 10% off or like, I, like I spoke about earlier in the video of like the strategy of 
using the launch to, to generate revenue from your existing customers and then from your subscribers and do it separately instead of doing it to your whole list. So you can actually reward people for buying from you prior and then tell the other people, hey, these people bought, there's hundreds of customers buying right now. You might want to get in on this before we run out because we didn't, we didn't make, we don't think we made enough to cover the initial, the initial launch. Um, just because of X, Y, and Z, you can make a reason, you can have a reason for that. But whatever the reason is to create scarcity and urgency in this, you can, you can use it if it's legit, if it's fake and uh, people are going to know if it's fake, if it's a countdown timer that runs out and they sign up for another email and they get it again. Like if it's, if it's, a, if it's an unlimited countdown timer that never technically runs out or a product that never technically runs out, don't use scarcity and urgency. It's not real. So if it is real, if you guys did make, you know, a thousand, if you, if you produce a thousand boxes or 10,000 boxes and you get a hundred thousand person list or a million list, and those are selling to the customers that already exist. You can now launch and say, Hey, we're at 600 boxes left. And you guys just found out about it because we sold to our existing customers. That's why being a customer matters is because you get this stuff first and early. So if you want some, go buy it now. That's real. Like you can create that scarcity and urgency for your list and get them to buy now. So that's some other stuff you can do on the back end. And I know I promised it's going to be a shorter video, but we're running up on 15 minutes. So let me go over the, the three big insights here from this email so we can um, so we can get you back to your brand and making sales with email. Uh, so the first one, uh, testing the bigger hooks here for the subject line. So new, fast, quick, easy, big, um, um, and whatever those other hooks. Like you, you can just test the big, big angles, big hooks here to see if we can get them, get people to click in the email. Again, new is a great one. New is never really going to run out. New is pretty much the thing that, that humans run on. They're curious. They want to know what the new thing is. They get a dopamine hit when they see and find new. Um, so yeah, that's the one big insight is test the hooks here on these launches and see which which one or which uh, collection of them or which percentage of them of your list actually likes certain types of hooks. That can help make launches way uh, way more profitable and you can create more revenue because after knowing that, after knowing what makes your, your customers tick. Uh, the second thing, yeah, I think, it, uh, yeah, it was a strategy. So sending this initially to your customers with a 48 hour window to buy with a 10% off coupon to create that momentum and then take that and use that momentum and that purchase history or that purchase um, uh, activity and use that to sell to your list who hasn't bought from you yet. So showing that a group of people is already buying and that they're missing out and the fear of missing out FOMO is going to drive sales as well as scarcity and urgency of like these people are already buying. And you should probably buy now before we run out because we don't have how many we're going to actually, like, we don't know how fast it's going to go. And we only made so many because it's a new bar. We want to test it. We want to see if you guys like it before we make a whole batch. So that's the second insight. The third insight is dimensionalizing your copy here. So put this in the customer's life, share with them uh, how it's actually going to fit into life. Uh, whether it be, you know, taking the kids from school to soccer practice and, you, and it's going to be another two hours before dinner and they're hungry, give them a couple snacks. Uh, maybe you're going from the office to um, a meeting or, Maybe you're going from the office to get the kids and you need to snack before you go, you know, get dinner for them. Or uh, maybe it's lunch and it's just been a busy day and you can't stop. You need a snack. You can use it, right? So whatever the dimensionalization is and that benefit and putting it in, into the customer's life, do that with this copy. It can be one line. It can be one word if you can get it down to that. But I think that's what's missing here in this copy is it shows, hey, customers, here's a snack size. Here's the flavors. And then a little goes a long way. It's like, Okay, cool. That tagline is pretty general, but like, let's make it more specific and see if we can use that to get more clicks and sales. So those are three big insights. I hope this helped. This is a direct offer product introduction. There's not a whole lot of preamble storytelling with this one, which I think is great. Um, if you're introducing new offers to existing customers, this is the way to do it. So with that being said, take these insights back to your brand, make, make some more, uh, make more sales with email with these. And if you get some results, let me know. I would love to talk to you about it and see how it went for you. Um, in the meantime, go check out my other videos on YouTube. Um, I've got a little over 60, uh, I think this is number 70 actually, uh, videos, uh, maybe 69 or 70, but videos of breaking down emails like this um, as a part of my 100 emails and 100 days breakdown challenge. So go check those out um, and I hope you have a good day. Thanks.